Over the last few years, I have been doing my best to try and learn the craft of filmmaking. And one of my favorite ways of doing this so far has been the micro short film, that really tiny little project that's somewhere in between just a few seconds long and about two minutes, one minute being the absolute sweet spot. You can learn so much from these tiny little one minute short films. And actually most of the awards that I've won are for these kind of tiny projects. I've made micro short films, some of which have been really successful and some of which have been pretty dismal failures and some that are, you know, in the in-between space. So I figured today would be a good time for me to go through, look at some of these short films and sort of walk through what my process was for making them. So the first piece of advice I can really give to you is make sure that you're doing things at an appropriate scale. It's very easy when making any film to set your ambitions very high, to think I want to do so many different things with this. And when you're making a really tiny film, that can sometimes get in the way. The first sort of micro short film that I made for a competition uh, was Don't, which was meant to be 90 seconds long for the Depict film competition. And the idea that we came up with for that film, me and the rest of the team, involved time travel, it involved like a police breaking into the house, it was a bit much. I think scaling down is a really good idea. Do that as early as you can so you don't trip up on it later in the process. The short film that I made for Milo is a really good example of this. Very little actually happens in that film. You start by seeing someone writing a card and then someone knocks on the door, the person goes over and answers it. But because of the structure, it's still really engaging and it still tells a complete story, which I think brings me on to my next point, which is make sure you've got a solid beginning, middle, end, and you really know what you're trying to do with the film. Pacing is absolutely key. You really need to measure out the information that you're giving out and make sure you're doing it at a, a sort of steady, regular pace and that it's very controlled. My short films, The Docs and For Milo, I think do this successfully. These films, I started with a, a series of close-ups that build a kind of picture of what's going on without giving you the whole story. And then every subsequent shot tells you a little something more. Whether that's through the dialogue and cutting to flashbacks in the docs, or whether it's seeing that the card that's being written is a get well soon card and hearing the knock off screen, seeing them pick up the flowers, it's all measured out and you can slowly get a picture of what's going on. With longer short films, it's easier to let the scene unfold a little more naturally. But with a micro short, you really need to think of every shot as being a domino that falls into the next one. Something related to that that's worth considering very early on is average shot length. Now, different films have different shot lengths. Like if you think about a Paul Greengrass film or a Michael Bay, like those have very short average shot lengths of just, you know, a couple of seconds. Whereas someone like Paul Thomas Anderson, who holds for a really long time on his shots, you know, he might have an average shot length of 20 seconds, 30 seconds. But if you sort of split the difference and say average shot length of, you know, five or six seconds, that means you've only got 10 cut points across an entire short film. And each one of those cuts needs to tell you a little something new. So that's something that I always have in the back of my brain when writing a micro short film. How much information do you need in a new shot? How much information does a cut need to give you? I think I was most deliberate about this in the docs and you can really see that. Every shot in the flashback sequence, for example, tells a different part of the story. You get the fact that he was at the docks and the fact that he saw her at the docks. You get the fact that she recognized that she'd been seen and you also get the blood dripping off the knife. Every one of those things tells you something new. And I probably wouldn't have been quite so deliberate about it if I hadn't been considering just how little time there is. The last thing to consider, and I think this is good advice for any short film, is to end with a real full stop. For, for Milo, this is really easy to spot. When she recognizes what her friend arriving means, she 
drops the flowers and drops the card and you end on that close-up of for Milo on the front of the card. That is a nice punch to end the whole film with. Similarly with the docks, when the switchblade comes out, that's a good place to end the film. That really implies something and is a good full stop to end the film on. A hand reaching out of a computer screen and delete me, another great example. If you go back to an older short film that I made uh, called An Empty House, it was two minutes, so it was at the longer end of this kind of micro short film scale, and I was really trying to build suspense with that film. It was a lot of lingering shots of like lights coming on and close-ups and lingering pans, which did a lot to build tension, but ultimately there is no ending to it. The guy goes over, looks out the door, sees there's nothing there, and that's the end. And that doesn't leave you with anything. There's no end to the story. There's no culmination of a character arc. There's no visual punch. It's just a non-ending. For Don't as well, we also didn't have a decent ending planned, so we ended up having to just grab some stuff and give that visual punch with an ending that kind of didn't really make sense if you think about it from the time travel logic perspective. So I think that's everything that I've got to say on micro short films. Let me know if any of it at all was helpful, uh, and if you've made micro short films of your own, please do let me know. I'd be very interested to see them. If you haven't seen any of the micro short films that I've been talking about in this video, please feel free to click a link somewhere. There'll be a, a playlist of short films that I've made, and let me know what you think of those. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a nice day, week, month, year, however long it is until I make the next video.